Is it a bad time to start looking for a new job? Well, stick around because in this video, I'm going to share my thoughts on the labor market. Hey everybody, it's Brian from A Life After Layoff and today I want to talk about whether or not it's a good time to open up an active job search. And this question is brought up very frequently in my social channels about people who are actively working in a job today and whether or not it makes sense to start looking for a new job given today's economic climate. So I want to share my perspective on what I would do in today's labor market if I was unsatisfied in my current position. But before we get too far into it, if you'd like to reclaim the power and start to act like the CEO of your career, make sure you sign up for my free weekly newsletter. And in it, I share actionable and concise tips on how to reclaim your power and start to act with more authority in your career. So if you're a career-minded individual, this is the one for you. Keep in mind, it's absolutely free. So in the last few years, I've seen a lot of employment trends, everything from the great resignation through quiet quitting, quiet firing, loud quitting, and all these other kind of buzzwords that seem to be popping up every time you turn around. And the power pendulum in the job marketplace tends to swing back and forth kind of seems like it swings more towards the employer than it does the employee. Last year at this time, it seemed to be the heyday of job seeking where every company was seemed to be throwing a bunch of money at candidates. Everybody was landing these huge raises and people who are burned out and unsatisfied with their current jobs could afford to kick their feet up and take it a little easy because companies needed them more than they needed the company because there was frankly seven or eight different job opportunities for every single person or so it seemed. Now, this certainly was the case in the tech industry. And if you're a recruiter, it was the gravy train. I mean, me personally, I was being constantly bombarded with opportunities and some pretty well-paying jobs. And honestly, when I was actively looking for jobs, some of the opportunities that came my way would have been very advantageous or would have been definitely perked my ear up. So from that perspective, I knew that something was up. It's kind of like the canary in the coal mine where you have to pay attention to the recruiter market because Let's face it, recruiters are the last people to be hired. Companies don't wanna hire people to hire people. So they usually are the last people that they'll open up Rex for. And, and only when things are really bumping, will they finally pull the trigger on that headcount. But they're also usually the first to be fired in an economic downturn. So it's kind of like, again, the, the canary in the coal mine. If, pay attention to what the recruiter market is doing if you wanna know whether or not it's a good time to be actively looking for a job. In today's market, as I record this video, recruiters have been hit particularly hard. And I would say recruiters and the tech industry in general, those are the two major industries, although it has spilled over into some other industries as well. And the good news is, is that there are some people, I, I'm connected with on LinkedIn, probably a thousand recruiters at this point, maybe even more, but a lot of them got laid. It seemed like every single one of them got laid off all around the same time or within a six month period of time. I think uh, I would say better than 50% for sure were being laid off and, and switching jobs. And I still, as I log into my LinkedIn feed, I'm still seeing a lot of people announcing that they've been laid off. Good news is, is that seems to have slowed down significantly over the last three or four months. But certainly at the beginning part of this year, it was like a bloodbath. Every time I would log into LinkedIn, I would see 10, 15, 20 new people announcing, recruiters announcing that they had been laid off. So the good news is though, I am seeing a lot of those folks getting back to work. However, it does seem like the jobs that they're now moving into are an entire notch down. Companies are being much more particular about how they're adding headcount and what they're paying. The, the pay rates are certainly lower than they were a year ago at this time. But one thing that I'm also seeing is an increase in kind of what I would call like low quality or non-committal employment, these part-time jobs or less than full-time or contract positions seem to be very popular, at least in the recruiting space. And then when you flip over and look at the tech side of things, and I'm also connected to a ton of people on LinkedIn who are software developers, I, I spent a lot of time recruiting them. I'm not necessarily seeing a ton of people announcing that they've gotten new jobs. So what that indicates to me is that there are some people who are finding employment, but I don't think that the employment options are as strong as they may have been. And maybe that person who sat on the sidelines during the heyday of the job seeking market may be kicking themselves in the butt at this point saying, well, man, I missed my opportunity to get these huge pay increases. I should have left when I had the chance and I could be in a better situation. Unfortunately, what a lot of those people who did make those jumps to those much bigger salaries have found out is that their name was circled on the layoff list. So now 
suddenly you went from having a stable career to having multiple jobs. I know some people, somebody wrote, wrote to me recently on LinkedIn and said that uh, she had experienced, I think it was two or three layoffs in the period of a year. Um, previous to that had a very solid work history. So it's like suddenly you have a job, kind of a job hoppy resume. And it'd, it'd be ironic because you'll have some employer that will call you out on that and say, well, why did you leave this job? And why did you leave that job? And it's really pretty unfortunate because it's not the employee's fault. It's honestly, it's these companies who recklessly hired during this employment pendulum swinging, like, like literally I got like whiplash. I had to get <laughs> practically I had to get a neck brace trying to pay attention to employer market, employee market, employer market. But you're going to have some employers that will start calling that out. And I'm seeing that be a lot more of the case where people are reaching out to me saying, Hey, I've got some challenges on my resume. Can you help me clean them up? And that's kind of the, the symptom of a very chaotic labor market. So if I'm somebody that's looking to make a move, I'm in a job, not feeling very satisfied. I maybe saw a lot of my fellow coworkers taking off for greener pastures. And I'm thinking maybe it's time that I want to dip my toe in the water. I would say in general, it doesn't feel like we're in a strong labor market. And certainly if you're in a toxic situation, you should always be looking. And if we want to treat ourselves like the CEO of our career or that free agent, we always want to be keeping our options open for better opportunities because it is a very viable strategy to move from one employer to the next in order to get these bigger increases in salary. However, you have to be really careful with that because too many too quickly can actually damage your resume. You get to keep in mind, every single job that you take is either going to strengthen or weaken your resume. And you have to ask yourself long and hard, is the next position that I'm considering going to make my resume better or not? But I do think you're going to be a little disappointed if you think you're going to enter into the job market and see these huge increases in pay, these huge signing bonuses that were really common, you know, even less than a year ago. So absolutely you should put your toe in the water and just see what's out there. It certainly doesn't hurt to do that. However, if you're somebody that's gainfully employed today, I would just make sure that you're very careful with how you approach your job search strategy. I would not be recklessly going out, declaring to everybody that I'm looking for a job, telling my employer to piss off while I kick over the planner and quitting my job without having another one lined up. Keep in mind, it's always easiest to find a job when you already have a job. The pressure is a lot lower and you can make decisions with a degree of strength instead of panic applying and just trying to stop the bleeding. I would also recommend that you fully vet out the opportunities that you're considering because again, companies are getting a little less committal to employees. Not that they were really committal before, but at least they were giving out full-time opportunities and they were giving decent signing bonuses and trying on the surface to show how much they wanted people. But now we're seeing a little less commitment. I don't think I'm leaving a steady job to go and take a unpermanent or short-term contract just to get out of an organization unless it was truly toxic and I needed to make a move. So kind of boiling this all down, is it a good time to be looking for a job in today's market? I don't know. I, I don't think it's the best time ever to be looking for a job. However, people are still getting jobs. And if you can put a nice tidy bow on your employment presentation, then it might be worth testing the open waters. We should always be keeping our options open anyway. And at the very least, you should be working on your networks. That's probably the place that I would spend most of my time. But if you're somebody that's really struggling and you need to get out of your current employer, yet you're not sure what your options are, or you're not feeling very confident in your employment presentation, your marketing skills, so to speak, then that's something that I specialize in. So I have a website, it's called a lifeafterlayoff.com and I encourage you to check that out. But I also share my deepest and most intimate knowledge in the form of some training courses. And the first one is Resume Rocket Fuel. And it teaches you how to write your own resume quickly and easily so that you can get recruiters to start noticing you to get into that first round interview. Because let's face it, for a lot of us, your resume is your first and often only impression that you're gonna make on a hiring team. So you really need to make sure that your resume is airtight and solid. But once you get into the interview process, and especially for a high quality employer, you wanna make sure that you're putting your best foot forward and that's where the ultimate job seeker bootcamp comes in. I take you from job search and walk you each round through the interview process, giving you tips and techniques and strategies on how to ace each round, ultimately to get you to the offer. And then I give you some tips, techniques to make sure that you're not leaving a single dime on the table. So if you're somebody that struggles with your interviewing skills, that's a great course for you. Then of course the networking component. And that's probably, like I said earlier, where I would spend most of my time if I was a passive job seeker who was starting to open things up a little bit. 
I would be absolutely working on building networks of relevant people. And I do that through LinkedIn. If you're not sure how to set yourself up for the maximum amount of exposure on LinkedIn, to get those recruiters to come and find you and to leverage your network to start to access things like the hidden job market, then unlocking LinkedIn is the course for you. Because I break it down all from a recruiter's perspective on how we leverage the tool to get people into the interview process quicker. You can actually bypass the line altogether. And in some cases, you can actually bypass the recruiter, and that's probably the preferable method anyway. So if you're struggling in your job search, I would encourage you to check all those out. Anyway, that's my take on the job market today. Tomorrow it may change, but I appreciate you watching, and we'll see you on the next one.